Course 3, let's do Lesson 35 today. Lesson 35 is about similar and congruent polygons. This is on page 229. If we could think back in time just a, a little bit ago, we can remember that two figures are similar if they have the same shape, even though they may vary in size. That means even though one shape might be larger than the other, they could still be considered similar because they might maintain the same angles. So with if you look on the bottom of your page 229, you might you see four triangles there, and it's the fourth triangle is totally different. While the first three are different sizes, they have the same angles, but D is a right triangle and therefore doesn't fit. Now, if the triangles are the same size and the same shape, they are not only similar, but they are also congruent. Now, congruent is that special word that we'll use in math, where, uh, um, this lost my thought. Congruent means that they're not only the same size and shape, or not only are the same shape, but they're also the same size. Size and shape are the same. Whereas when they are similar, they are the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. So keep that in mind as we are doing this. Therefore, if I, and with congruent triangles, they can be in different positions. Now I'll do the best I can to make these congruent, but you know, I'm hand drawing these and that's how it goes, but obviously this is not. But let's assume they're congruent. Triangle A, B, and C, and triangle D, E, F. And since these are apparently congruent triangles, we could say that angle A corresponds to angle D. And we could say that angle B corresponds to angle E. And we could also say that angle C corresponds to angle F. And if I had drawn a third triangle, I could also show where they correspond as well. Now the other thing about congruent triangles is this. Not only since their angles are the same, I can indicate that by these lines. I'll draw one line for A and D because they're the same. I'll draw two to show that these two are different for B and E. B and E are the same, but they're different from A and D. And I'll draw three to indicate that C and F are the same, but different from the other two angles. Okay, so that's another way I can do that. But since congruent triangles are also the same size, or also the same shape and the same size, we can also indicate that the lines, the segments that make them up are also the same. I could say uh, segment EF is the same as segment CB. I could say that segment AC is the same as segment DF. And I could say AB is the same, segment AB is the same as segment DE. And I could write that out, but I could say all those different things about this. Okay, so let's keep this in mind. We're talking about polygons and these multi-sided shapes that similar polygons have corresponding angles, which are the same measure, and corresponding sides, which are proportional in length. So with our similar polygons, similar polygons, we have not only are they the same size, sorry, not only are they the same shape, but they're proportional. That means we can find out what they might be. And they are proportional. That's different from congruent polygons. Congruent polygons Congruent polygons have the same shape 
and are the same size. So, same size and shape. So keep those things in mind as we continue through today's lesson. Now, I'm not going to draw these out because this, the drawings are kind of confusing, but look on example one in your books. Example one, page 231. Example one shows four quadrilaterals. Remember quadrilaterals, that four-sided shape? You have A, B, C, and D. And notice their angles. Uh, which ones are similar? Take a look at A. A has degrees of 100. I'm just going to write them out without as 100. It has 80, 100, and 80. It's a parallelogram. B is 100, 80, 80, and 100. C is 80, 100, 80, 100. This is four parts, and then 100. 100 for D, 80, 80. So we got two parallelograms and you have one trapezoid. Well, let's throw the trapezoid out all together. Okay, now the other key thing is to note, I guess I am gonna sketch these in. Other key thing that you have to note, oh, it didn't sketch it, I'm not gonna sketch it in because I'm gonna mess it up. The other key thing to note is that A, the sides are 12, 12, 8, 8. B, the sides are 8, 8, 6, 6. C, they are 4, 4, 6, 6. And D, they are 12, 16 and a half, 13, 13. And the question was, which ones are similar? Well, we can draw out D right away, because that's not even a parallelogram, OK? So we, let's see, which ones have corresponding angles are congruent? Well, A, B, and C all have the same angle, so our step one is done. They're similar if they're corresponding angles. Are congruent, so, so far so good. And they are similar if they are proportional. So let's compare the short sides to the long sides. In A, we have 8 to 12. In B, we have 6 to 8. In C, we have four to six, I should have done that line. Okay, so if we reduce all these down, we reduce eight to 12 down, we get with eight twelve, eight twelve becomes two thirds, this becomes three fourths, this becomes two thirds. Therefore, A and C are similar because we were able to reduce them down. Now when we talk about triangles, we can compare similarity with triangles. And with triangles for similarity, so let's write triangle similarity. If two triangles have proportional corresponding side lengths, why do I have to keep writing the word corresponding? Well, that's an important word because uh, corresponding means that we're talking about this, the angles that reply to each other in the triangles they are similar. Okay, so so we can compare triangles by their sides. 
We can also do angle for angle similarity. So if two triangles, so that's point one, point two, if two triangles, oh sorry, let me start that again. If, sorry, I was thinking about the side by side and I messed up, but I'm not deleting this one because I don't feel like starting again, so I messed up. So let's do angle for angle similarity. If the angles of one triangle are congruent to the angles of another triangle, then they are similar and the corresponding sides are just like the first point are proportional. So good handy stuff for that. And we're going to put this into practice right now. So make sure you write this down. It's also on page 232 in case you didn't get, don't pause it or something. So let's draw two triangles and I wish I could make these, I mean I could start throwing in shapes and stuff but I still get problems doing that. So I got one triangle and I'll draw a bigger one. It's a right triangle. This is X, this is 15 inches and this is 12 inches. Now let's find out what the deal is. All right, so the left triangle, we're gonna pick two sides from the right triangle to write a ratio and include X. So I'm gonna do, um, from th this one, I'm gonna do four and three. And because I wanna include X, I'm gonna also make sure this is 12 and X. So I gotta make sure these are corresponding four four corresponds to 12 and three corresponds to X. So we can be clear on that. Since I set up a proportion, what times four equals 12? The answer is three. So three times, so four times three equals 12. So three times three equals nine. So my proportion, is it proportional? Yes, that means this is nine inches. I found that out. And the constant factor that relates the ratios is called the scale factor. So what is it? Well, the scale factor is three because this triangle, the second triangle, the right triangle is the right right triangle because it's a right triangle, three times the size. So good useful information from you. You could do that when you're doing your problems, and I got about a minute left. If one inch, if you had a drawing and one inch equals four feet, then what is the scale factor of the actual building? One inch is four feet. One inch also equals 48 inches. So what's the scale factor of the actual building? Well, 48 inches. So the scale factor is one to 48 because you know, these are two different measurements, so we gotta put them in the same. Now, what is the length and width of a room that is five inches by four inches on that drawing? How big is the actual size of that room? Well, that room, each inch is four feet, so five times four, five times four, not 40, five times four equals 20 feet and four times four equals 16 feet. So that room is 20 by 16. All right, give the practice on page 233 a shot and we'll meet again later.